What is up, everybody? Happy Friday, and welcome back to the Everything Crypto Show, where we keep you up to speed on the most important news moving the crypto markets. Now, we are back today with a very important daily market update. As the crypto market has been making its way to the downside in the past 24 hours, you can see here that pretty much everything in the top 100 here is in the red, with the exception of a couple of coins. And that's because we saw Silvergate, the largest crypto bank, cite business, regulatory, and financial challenges that may impact their ability to continue operating over the next year and this is a big concern for the broader crypto markets as silver bank here serves over 750 of the most well-known digital currency exchanges and institutional investors so if this bank was to go under that would have a pretty big widespread impact on the rest of the crypto industry and that is why we have been seeing such a big sell-off here so we're going to break that down more in depth as well as uk's largest bank banning customers from purchasing crypto with credit cards now coincidentally or not so coincidentally this comes at the same time that the bank of england says that a digital pound could protect consumers from future bank runs effectively trying to push a lot of their citizens into using a future central bank digital currency and while i don't agree with this i do think there are there is a very good way to make money on this in the form of quant and we're going to break down those connections here between this altcoin and the bank of england as well as the digital pound foundation in this video and last but not least i do want to talk about crypto.com who just partook in a very big global investing event as they do continue to really try and make crypto.com a worldwide brand name so without further ado it is time to sit back relax grab that morning cup of joe and enjoy the show now make sure to hit that sub like and notification bell if you have not already and join the everything crypto squad and with that we're going to hop right in here with the question of the day so today i want to know would you be interested in seeing a crypto portfolio update on the channel sometime next week if so let me know in the youtube comments down below and uh, if you guys have been following this channel over the past year, you would know that we did a ton of buying throughout last year, even a little bit at the beginning of this year. And there has been a lot of changes to my portfolio since the last update did go live in terms of my allocation. So if you do want to see an update on the channel, let me know in the YouTube comments down below. And with that, we're going to hop right in here with the charts. So Bitcoin currently sitting at 22.3K, down just over 4.5% in the past 24 hours. And even before we knew about about this news with Silvergate, I did say that Bitcoin was most likely headed back down to 20,000. You can check the tapes. We call for that after we saw two weekly candles actually get rejected at both the 50 and the 200 week moving average. And that did lead me to believe that Bitcoin just did not have the buying pressure to break above the 200 week MA, which is, in my opinion, going to be a key area of resistance for Bitcoin to flip. And if you guys want to know why I actually am putting so much importance on the 200 week MA when it comes to the price action of Bitcoin, I'm going to zoom out here onto a log scale and show you guys. So you're taking a look at the yellow line. That is the 200 week MA. And you can see that historically, this has created some very good buying opportunities for Bitcoin. Here in 2015, Bitcoin bounced off the 200 week MA around the $235 range and then rallied all the way up to the 2018 all time high of $20,000. Then once again, Bitcoin bounced off the 200 week MA here in 2019 at around the 3.3 to 3.5K range, rallied all the way up to 14K. Once again, again in 2020 actually bounce off of the 200 week ma and you can actually see here if we zoom in that it wigged below this level on two weekly candles but actually closed above it validating it as support and this was pretty much the last opportunity to buy at the 200 week moving average before we hit the previous bull run all-time high of 69,000, or just over that level now take a look at this bear market this would mark the first one in history where bitcoin has broken below the 200 week ma and spent a sustained period of time below this level now you can see here that back in this was in july and august we tried to to break above it we had a little fake out here but never closed a full candle above this level and then just once again and broke back down below it and that is why just as it has acted as strong support in the past arguably one of the strongest levels of support in bitcoin's entire price history it is now acting as a strong level of resistance so even before the silvergate news just based on the technicals and what the charts were telling me i did think bitcoin was due for a retest of twenty thousand. i think that if we could see a healthy test of that level see the bull step in and hold the line near the previous bull cycle all-time high that could definitely sort of lead bitcoin to a more sustained uptrend into the latter half of this year now as for ethereum here i mean similar story when it comes to bitcoin i think we are due for a retest of the 2018 all-time high sitting at 1400 the only real difference here between bitcoin and ether 
is that Bitcoin is uh, is below the 200 week MA while Ether is above the 200 week MA, but both of them are getting rejected at the 50 week moving average. So right now the 50 week and the 200 week are two key technical areas that I am keeping an eye on. And you can see here that just like Bitcoin, Ethereum tried to break above it twice, got rejected right at this level and then has since just been kind of moving its way to the downside. Now, interesting to note as well that Ether's 200 week moving average actually sits at 1423 and the 2018 all-time high is sitting at 1400 so once again a lot of technical indicators suggesting to me that both bitcoin and ethereum do want to revisit their previous bull run all-time highs at four at twenty thousand and fourteen hundred dollars respectively so that's all we got for the charts today now taking a look at the crypto bubbles i mean look at this so first of all on the week bitcoin's down 3.6 percent ether down 1.7 bnb down 3.8 percent matic 8.5 percent solana 6.8 percent chain link down eight percent uh, AVAX is down 10% here on the week, H bar 16. I mean, then take a look at the day. And uh, with, the, with the exception of just a couple of coins, I mean, we're pretty much looking at a complete bloodbath here with, with a little bit of green sprinkles on top. Like we got Crow down 5.3%, Frack Share down 11.1%, Mana down 6.1%, Bitcoin 48 I mean, you guys can see here that the crypto market is definitely not having a super hot day. On the week, a little bit more of a mixed bag, but still overall, the crypto market has really gone down a lot this week. Optimism here is down 19.2%. After we did actually see a big pump based on the news that Coinbase would be building their very own base layer 2 using Optimism technology, still up 16.6% on the month and 103% on the year. So for the most part here with a couple of outliers, it definitely not been a super hot week for majority of the crypto market, but on a year-to-day basis, things are still looking pretty good. And this is what tends to happen in accumulation phases. There is a ton of volatility. Bulls and bears both get wrecked if you are too headstrong on either direction. And that is why we do tend to just sort of talk about these quick money moves that are to be made in the accumulation phase i don't think we will be seeing a more sustained uptrend until 2024 in line with the next bitcoin having now to put things into perspective as we have seen a pretty ugly week i thought this was a very good tweet from bitcoin magazine that actually shows you guys the bitcoin returns since 2010 this serves as a very strong reminder that all you have to do is zoom out and hold and it is very hard to lose money in crypto if you are just simply patient and let these assets appreciate as they are still very immature as a just as an asset class as a whole i mean bitcoin is the largest one here making up over 40 percent of the entire crypto market cap and it does not even have a 500 billion dollar market cap so to put things into perspective here i mean bitcoin returns since 2010 in 2010 it was up at 9900 percent 2011 up 1473 percent and 2012 up 186 percent 2013 up 5500 percent and here was the first red year in 2014 down 58%. Then after this, it proceeded to rally for three years in 2015 up 35%, 2016 125%, and in 2017 up 1331%. Then we did see the second uh, red year here four years later from 2014. Uh, now looking at 2018 with a down 73% year. In 2019, Bitcoin was up 95%, 2020 up 301%. 2021 up 66 percent and last year we actually saw bitcoin down to 65 percent on a year on a yearly basis actually down from peak to trough just over 70 percent and so far in 2023 at the time of this tweet it was up 43 percent i don't think that's the case anymore because we're down like five percent now but point being here is first of all we've talked a lot about the very cyclical four-year cycle so you can see here that 2014 was red and then we saw green 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 red green 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 red red so what do you think is going to happen next i suspect that we see green 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 up until 2026 and then 2026 will be the next red year that we do see for the crypto markets so the odds are very much in your favor if you follow the four year cycles if you buy on the red years and you hold and we did a lot of buying last year throughout the bear market and that has already begun to pay itself off in the new year even though we have seen a slight dip over the past couple of days now as for ethereum here we can take a look this one doesn't have as much of a defined cycle as bitcoin does yet but i do suspect that it will also find its footing in more of a four-year cycle now that it has established itself as a blue chip in my opinion so in 2015 ether was up 24 percent in 2016 756 percent 2017 
93 100%. Now, the 2018 bear market, we saw Ether down 82.38%. And even the following year, it actually was red two years in a row, down 2.82%. So just barely considering like a 2.82% candle, Ether can do can do that easily in a matter of minutes. So that was like a pretty mute year, in my opinion, essentially break even, honestly, slightly red. And then in 2020, it was up 469%. 2021, another 399%. And in 2022, it was down to 67.55%. So you guys can see here once again, like a lot, a lot more green years than red years. So to put that into perspective, just zoom out and hold and don't freak out when you see these buying opportunities make their way. Because in my opinion, that is exactly what they are is just buying opportunities. I think the long term, both of these asset classes are going to do extremely well. And I do still maintain my price target on Bitcoin of 100K and Ether to $10,000. And aside from the price action, the fundamentals do continue to improve as well for Bitcoin. We can see here that as of Tuesday, December 27th, that the hash rate on a seven day moving average sat at 224 million. That is now sitting at 309 million after peaking out at just over 321 mil in late February. And this is indicative of more miners than ever fighting to validate their piece of this blockchain to get Bitcoin as a block reward. So the hash rate hitting an all time high for Bitcoin at the same time that Ethereum supply is hitting all time lows since the transition to proof of stake in the past 169 days we have seen over 4300 ethereum sorry 43,000 ether burned off and removed from the flow completely i've said it multiple times and i'll say it again we are entering the next bull market with a completely different ethereum eth is now a deflationary beast it is no longer deflationary as it was before and to see the impact of this let's just take a look at what the supply would have been had we stayed under proof of work so had ethereum stayed under the proof of work consensus we would have actually seen 1.9 million ether being brought into the float being dumped on retail by these ethereum miners and that would have brought the total ether supply up to 122.4 million instead it is currently sitting at 120.4 million so about 2 million less ether than would have currently been circulating because of this transition to proof of stake i think that this is going to have a massive impact on ethereum in the next bull run as people do begin to realize that it sort of is this snowball effect that we have been talking about which goes something like this we see more buying pressure on ethereum leading to more on-chain activity which leads to the gway meter going above the magic number of 15.5 and when that happens we actually see ethereum flip deflationary as more ether is being burned and removed from the float than is being issued out to these staking these stakers as a validator rewards and then the cycle continues as people realize if there is deflationary we see more buying pressure more on-chain activity and the cycle continues from there so very bullish on ethereum that is why it does remain the largest position in my portfolio and uh, with that i mean we're gonna hop into the news now so that's all the fundamental stuff going on with bitcoin and ether in terms of the daily market update and now i do want to talk about silvergate as the stock has crashed after the company delays an annual report revealing new losses so they said on thursday that they will pretty much miss their march 16th deadline to file an already delayed annual report saying that they require additional time to perform analysis record journal entries related to subsequent events and to complete management evaluation of internal controls over financial reporting silvergate shares have collapsed as the company's entanglements with several crypto firms including ftx resulted in deposits falling by more than two-thirds in the fourth quarter of last year in january they laid off 40 percent of their staff and later suspended a dividend on preferred shares as they were trying to shore up some cash and uh, I mean, you can see here that over the last year, shares of Silver Bank have not been doing too hot, actually losing more than 95% of their value. And at the peak here, I mean, let's see what this uh, stock was valued at. At the peak, the stock was worth about $220, just under that, currently sitting at the $5.72 range. Let me actually refresh and see if that has changed. But to be honest, even if the stock price is up today, which I do believe it is, that is not going to help Silvergate get out of their trouble. Yeah, so it's currently up 6% on the day. But I mean, after being down like over 50% yesterday, I don't think that's a very big deal. To put things into perspective, this stock was trading at $13.53 on March 1st, okay? 
it's March 3rd, so not looking too hot for Silvergate. And honestly, that is also concerning for the rest of the crypto market as well as they have cited business and regulatory challenges. And they are now weighing how much these changes might affect their ability to continue as going as a going concern for the 12 months following the issuance of these financial statements. So effectively, they are concerned about whether or not they can actually continue operating moving forward. And this is a concern as Silvergate actually serves over 750 of the most recognized and well-funded digital currency exchanges, institutional investors, and software developers in fintech. So lots of connections here with, with exchanges like Coinbase, Circle, Bitstamp, Kraken, Paxos, as well as Crypto.com. Now, we actually saw both Coinbase and Crypto.com announce yesterday that they would be moving away away from Silvergate and no longer working with them. But the matter of fact is this bank is still very entangled in the crypto industry as a whole and to see them go under would definitely mean some very big issues for the broader crypto market. So we can actually see here that a lot of these players have already distanced themselves from Silvergate. This includes Coinbase, Paxos, Galaxy Digital, Gemini, Bitstamp, Crypto.com, and Circle all issuing statements saying they have cut ties with a once crucial partner linking them to the traditional bank system and MicroStrategy here owned by Michael Saylor and outspoken Bitcoin bull has also addressed concerns for its silvergate loan in the event that the bank faces insolvency so lots of these crypto companies are disconnecting here galaxy uh, digital uk headquartered exchange bitstamp and crypto.com said they are halting banking transactions just out of caution more than anything and none of the companies are actually facing a material loss so a lot of them are trying to step in here and reassure people that even if silvergate does go under that their balance sheets are going to be okay that they have not loaned out too much money to silvergate nor are they actually relying on Silvergate for deposits and withdrawals. So that is very good news here. But still, the fact that they do have so many roots just tangled into the crypto market definitely does not look good for the broader industry as a whole. And I do suspect a lot more exchanges are going to announce that they are shifting partners over the next couple of days. Now, hopping into the news coming out of the UK here, their largest bank has actually banned customers from purchasing crypto with credit cards. So this comes from HSBC Holdings as they have actually implemented this ban. Additionally, nationwide, another bank in the UK has implemented a similar ban as both entities have issued the reaction to current regulatory concerns within the digital asset industry. So nationwide, okay, it wasn't a ban. It was a 5,000 pound daily limit on crypto purchase with a debit card. Moreover, Bloomberg notes that action arrives after industry scandals and regulatory warnings. So the thing here is that seeing banks like Silvergate collapse, seeing massive exchanges like FTX uh, collapse, it really does leave a bad look on the broader crypto market. And that does hinder institutional adoption here in the long run. It makes a lot of these banks more hesitant to actually get involved in cryptocurrency. The SEC has orchestrated a greater effort in regulatory enforcement. We saw the other day Gary Gensler deemed every crypto besides Bitcoin a security. And now English banks are starting to react to certain regulatory concerns in the industry as well as obviously they do have a big financial relationship with the U.S., and this comes at a time that the Bank of England is saying that a digital pound could protect consumers from future bank runs. So notice how these UK banks are trying to deter you from buying crypto, but at the same time trying to push a central bank digital currency on you. And they're trying to justify this saying that consumers are already living in an era of instantaneous bank runs where depositors can move quickly to another institution if they are worried about the solvency of the bank where they keep their deposits. And while a so-called central bank digital currency may May intensify a run on a bank as it would allow customers to move their money even more quickly it would also give them a safe place to store value so completely failing to mention the fact that you can also just own a stable coin like usdc or usdt and keep that in cold storage and there is no reason to keep a cbdc with a bank i think that what they're trying to do here is really front run crypto adoption and while knowledge is not as high on the subject try to convince people that you need a cbdc that your money is safer with a a bank and trying to avoid people holding stable coins in cold storage because they see the threat that crypto does pose to the traditional finance sector that is why they're trying to mingle traditional finance and crypto before adoption grows and people realize that you can pretty much have full self-custody of your assets through a cold storage wallet with no need for a central bank digital currency that is something they do not want and i don't think it's coincidence that major banks are blocking or limiting purchases of crypto in the uk while the bank of 
of England is making their push for a central bank currency to be rolled out. Now, a lot of people are deeming this Britcoin, which is definitely a pretty catchy name. And uh, one company here that is working on it, or one foundation anyways, is the Digital Pound Foundation. Now, we've covered the Digital Pound Foundation here before on the channel, and let's actually take a look at their community members who does have the likes of Ripple, Quant, as well as Avalanche sitting on this list. And we do also have Gilbert Verdi and the Quant CEO on the one as one of the board directors, as well as Susan Friedman from Ripple and Richard Ells from Electronium. We have Lee Schneider here from Ava Labs as well, so lots of ties with different cryptocurrency companies. And I do think that Quant is said to benefit the most from an upcoming CBDC or a Bitcoin making its way into the UK. As a matter of fact, here right on their website, we can see on the homepage that uh, the first thing, one of the first things they have here in terms of the benefits of the quant overledger is a digital currency. So we know this is a very big area of, of uh, that they are really trying to pursue for growth, saying that central banks across the world are investigating the adoption of digital currencies while commercial entities are issuing their own stable coins, often to great acclaim. So well regulated digital currencies whether at a national or commercial level can provide significant public benefits by increasing efficiency and reducing costs for both domestic and international payment systems. They can also play a major role in increasing financial inclusion by helping the hundreds of millions of people, especially in developing countries, to connect to the financial system. The challenge here is that without proper regulation, such currencies face serious challenges, particularly in the form of privacy and security, standards compliance, transparency, usability, and and performance at scale and though these challenges are met digital currencies will pose a threat to national economies so the solution and obviously quant is the solution according to their website and i do tend to agree as well that their technology does solve a lot of problems that would that would face a digital currency it says here that we enable the simple and flexible implementation of a digital currency a solution which provides the flexibility to support a wide range of use cases reliably securely and at the scale necessary for commercial and national and international implementation we facilitate central bank digital currency issuance and transactions transactions, commercial stablecoin issuance and transactions, and tokenized money. So pretty much the quant overledger here does have a pretty much, they're trying to set up the backbone of financial infrastructure, and they have three different solutions for digital currencies built in using their patent pending products. Number one is the overledger, the world's first blockchain agnostic API gateway, according to their website. Then overledger integrate, this is the gateway's core API, enabling you to create blockchain applications that will run on any blockchain blockchain faster and cheaper and last but not least overledger tokenize which allows you to create secure digital tokens without having to write a single line of code so you can make a digital currency or through tokenize and then build it build it out and have it transferable through any blockchain application via the overledger technology so interoperability tokenization two big things that i think will be very big in the next bull run both of which i believe quant is set to benefit greatly from and it's also worth noting that hsbc that did actually benefit and those crypto transactions via their cards that we spoke about earlier does have an indirect connection to Quant via their partnership with Oracle, who Quant is also partnered up with directly, which does give Quant access to a lot of the Oracle clients, which now does include HSBC, the largest bank in Europe, as well as the UK. Now, we're going to wrap this up here talking about Crypto.com, who continues on their path for global adoption as they participated in the 2023 edition of Investopedia as a founding partner. So Investopedia brings together global leaders and change agents to engage in the latest thinking on the global investment ecosystem and opportunities ahead. And we actually saw Eric Anziani here. And who is he? He's the president and CEO of Crypto or COO at Crypto.com, who was sitting on the panel here. He says, in the fintech revolution panel, I shared my thoughts about the future of finance and where blockchain, crypto, and Web3 use cases can drive value for individuals and companies. And he also did have the pleasure of talking about some different ministers of economy from different areas. He says, the UAE is now at the forefront of Web3 innovation, supported by the new launched VARA Comprehensive Regulatory Framework and its push towards new economies with the Dubai Economic Agenda 2023 and the Abu Dhabi Economic Vision 2030. So Crypto.com, you're continuing to really try and play a role in the future global adoption of crypto. That is what is going to continue driving the growth of this platform and have indirect impact.
tax on crow coin if they can incentivize people through the crypto.com app to purchase crow for the many benefits that it does offer and this has been very characteristic of crypto.com's strategy throughout the 2022 bear market which i believe has led them from having over 50 million users at the beginning of last year to over 80 million users as we are now in 2023 we can see here that last year alone they actually got regulatory approval here in paris uh so this was in france we had singapore the uk we had dubai let's see south korea australia Italy, we saw Greece, Cyprus, Cayman Islands, Ontario, like the list just goes on and on here. And in fact, they were actually the first global exchange to get a pre-registration undertaking with the Ontario Securities Commission and Canada Securities Administrators. We spoke recently how they actually got their payment institution license in Brazil as well. So you guys can see here, they're really aiming for that institutional adoption, security, compliance, and regulatory approval. I think that once the next bull run does ignite and we see more people being onboarded into crypto that crypto.com specifically will benefit from onboarding a ton of new users as they are a secure compliant and trusted platform on a global scale so without further ado i hope you guys did enjoy the content in today's video you know what to do if you made it all the way to the end you are an absolute champion let me know in the youtube comments down below and claim that champion status i hope you are all having an amazing friday i am wishing you all an amazing weekend ahead and i hope to catch you in the next one Peace out for now.